Welcome to an Olympus Controls tutorial. In this video, we're going to go through how to expand Universal Robots Digital I.O. using Mopsa's I.O. Logic Box. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so all of Mox's IO logic boxes come with a web server where the default IP address is 192.168.127.254. Um, so in order to connect to this box um, and change any of the settings that we would want, we first need to configure our Ethernet adapter after we've connect our Moxa box to the uh, PC, of course. So we're going to go to Properties, and we're going to change our IPv4, the Internet Protocol version 4, here. We're going to use the following IP address, so we need to be on the same network as our Moxa box. So we're going to do 192.168.127, uh, we'll do 250, since I know that's not currently being used, and we'll use the default subnet mask that pops up here. Click OK. Click Close. Alright, so now we should be able to connect to the IO Logic Box's uh, web server. There we go. Okay, so our universal robot is on a different network, so we are going to go ahead and change the network settings, the Ethernet configuration of the Moxa box. So we're going to assume, or we know that our robot network is on the 192.168.4, and our robot's uh, IP address is different than this 254 here at the end. All right, and you just click submit, and you'll get this kind of um, configuration complete screen, and then you can click save and restart. And you will notice that we won't be able to connect to the uh, I/O box anymore using this address. So now we need, we will be able to connect to it um, over the address that we set. But we do need to change our Ethernet adapter again to be on the same network. We'll do that real quick. Okay. And it may take uh, a minute or two uh, to update the settings, but it looks like this went through. All right, so our IP address of our Mox box has changed. Uh, you can also change um, your I.O. if you wanted to. Um, in this case, we have the 1242, um, you can see right here, uh, connected to our computer. We can go into our digital output channels, and we can configure digital outputs just by clicking on them and changing settings in the uh, pop-up. All right, so now that we have our IO logic box configured, we can now move on to setting up, uh, setting up our IO logic box to the universal robot. Okay, so after we've booted up our E-Series universal robot, we need to adjust our network settings to match our network on our IO logic box. Um, to do that, we click on the hamburger menu and select settings and then we will go under systems and click on network. We will select the static address and we will input our own address here that is on the same network as the IO logic box. 
So in this case, the network is 192.168.4, and then we're not using 150 for anything. Our mask will be uh, the default, 255.255.255. Uh, .255 .255. Um, our gateway will just be 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, same thing for our DNS, and then we will click apply. I'm using the emulator, so my IP settings will be a little bit different than if I were actually using a robot. If I were actually using a robot, these would be my IP settings, but since I'm using the emulator, I need to use my PC settings. So I'm just going to click exit here instead of apply, and I'm going to set up my Modbus device now. So the IO Logix box is a Modbus TCP device, and under the installation tab of the robot, in Fieldbus, Modbus, we are going to add a Modbus unit. And this Modbus unit IP address is that of the IO Logix box. Let me check. Okay. And then we are going to set up a couple digital inputs couple digital outputs and we'll also set up a couple um, analog signals as well. So we'll set up an input here, um, a couple outputs, and a couple inputs here. So this will be an input, address 1, output, output, address 1. And our analog inputs are actually register inputs here. And the register input starts at address 512 for analog input 0 and 513 for analog input 1. Um, the address, uh, the default address mapping can be found in the IO Logix uh, user manual. It's actually quite well documented, so if you have any questions about the Modbus, addressing or even if you want to change the addresses you can do that and you can find that in the IOLogix box or the uh, Mox's IOLogix manual. Um, I've actually uh, physically tied a jumper wire between digital input 1 and digital or digital input 0 and digital output 0. So I'm actually I'm going to name all of my Modbus signals as well. So I know what they are. Otherwise, I'm going to get lost. Uh, digital output zero. And you can name these whatever you want. Um, in this case, I'm just kind of keeping the names, uh, whatever they're tied to. So the digital inputs, the outputs, or the analog inputs. And then analog input. Uh, one. Okay, so if I click this, you'll notice that this input will go high just because I have them jumpered together. If I set the output on the first one, it's not tied to anything, so nothing happens besides just setting that output high. Um, I can also view my digital um, or my Modbus signals in the I.O. tab under external and Modbus here. And you notice I'll set my digital output zero, my digital input zero will go high. And if I want to use these in my program, I can simply go to program, um, and I can use a set command. I can set a digital output D0 to go high and this program will set my Modbus signal to go high. Um, so I put in a quick sync well, command. Okay. So currently, my digital output is low, and if I hit play, my program, oh, I need to power on my robot. And if I hit play, digital output zero will go high, and I will see digital input zero go high as well. There we go. And that is how you interface the 
uh, Moxa Iolagatrox to a universal robot. 